I think we can get started. Welcome to the DMM working group. This is uh, the working group session. So today, a couple of things. Uh, my co-chair, Deppeng, is not here. And uh, this is uh, Shri Gandavalli from Cisco. And uh, our AD Suresh should be joining anytime. But uh, we can get started. So a couple of things. Uh, this meeting is governed under some IETF rules and regulations. These are captured in various IETF uh, specifications. Uh, please be aware of that regarding IPR policy and with respect to what you say. Right? Please uh, be mindful of that. And uh, before the meeting, I think uh, blue sheets. Uh, I'm waiting for Stephanie. You know, we don't have the blue sheets yet. Uh, but uh, maybe we can. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Uh, I asked one of the guy. He said he'll ping. I think she's in a meeting, but uh, it's fine. So welcome, Suresh. Uh, and uh, minute takers. I think uh, you know, right? Yeah, Sadarisan and Pablo. And um, just some background. The deadline for the slides was Saturday, and. Surprisingly, they sent the slides on Saturday morning, but they put IET of 102. That, <laughs> that threw them back to the next day, and they won the award for the you know note takers. So thank you, Sadarasan. <laughs> thank you, Pablo. And uh, so a couple of things. I think uh, the status of the various working group documents. I think uh, the first thing is on-demand mobility document. This, uh, as you remember, this cleared the IETF last call and it also cleared, uh, it went to pretty much, it's it's on the AD review now, not IETF last call, sorry, the working of last call, but it's on the AD and there were few reviews that the authors worked with the reviewers, IESG reviewers, not IESG, but IESG assigned maybe uh, expert reviewers. Director reviews. Yeah, director's review. That they cleared it, but a uh, couple of things, uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, Suresh. Yeah, Suresh Krishnan, responsibility for this. Uh, so uh, one of the things like that personally, like I got private comments about was like, you know, the like the consensus in the working group on this is not very clear because there didn't seem to be much support, at least on the mailing list. And so, uh, so one of the things like I thought would be useful was like, you know, get some kind of uh, implementation commitments because uh, we spoke to Danny, like she and I spoke to the uh, lead author and he said like, you know, um, somebody's considering implementing it. So that would have been like a nice way to show it. Um, I also thought of like an alternate way of doing that would be to do like a quick check on the mailing list saying like, hey, like, are you interested in this progressing? And that would be like our things fine with me too. So I don't mind sending a mail to the mailing list. If okay. like that's fine with you, I'll just send a note saying, hey, are you interested in this draft progressing? Because I, I do want to see like a trail of like people who are interested in this progressing outside right. the author set really. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. So I, I, I don't think like, you know, just a commitment from OS vendor is something that's required right now, mm -hmm. but I want some kind of interest. And I also had um, another chat with, like the authors, like one of the things in ITF we haven't done. Okay, so we used to do this a long time ago, but we don't do uh, socket interface stuff. Okay, and this came up in Interia uh, yesterday as well. And uh, so uh, the actual C socket API definitions are being done by POSIX, not by us. Okay, so like, right. um, so another thing that probably needs to get done here is like make it a bit more uh, generic and uh, take out the hash include net in at like stuff and things like that right so those things probably have to get ironed out a little bit so okay. uh danny are you here danny is not here okay. i believe yeah that's fine so um i think we know how to go forward from there okay uh, that helps Suresh. thank you for that update yeah charlie uh, charlie perkins yeah if we can't use sockets uh, is there some genericized api that's approved by the isg just do we just use function names paren yeah. parameters close paren and then we can make some magic statement about typical include files or to be used. Okay. Yeah, so, so like, uh, again, this, this has come up as a design pattern in multiple places, which didn't work, right? right? We right. did the MIF API, didn't get through, right? Like PVD, MIF PVD API didn't get through and, and so on. And um, 
the one thing we know like for sure works i think is the gss api so i think we can probably get inspired by that like that's yeah, kind of that's kind of like example. a successful right, um, right, example right. there I, I, I think um, fair i, I think uh, i agree with what you said suresh only thing i want to be a little bit sensitive is the amount of time the authors have invested because you know i think there is i on this because it's so late in the game i want to be a little bit sensitive on that aspect because there's a element of frustration there that i think we should uh, address that properly yeah uh, yeah so rashi again so i i think that's a fair point right and i i really think we should uh, i know this thing came during the chair transition so like i think it's kind of um, slipped in between but i would have really expected like th this decision to be done like much further ahead i think in december 2016 so this document was working group last called in december 2016 right. okay Three so times. it's almost yeah. two years since the document yeah. finished working group last call so that's really um i i would have said like okay at that point decide like to take this forward or not like right. and right. i i do think i understand the sensitivity right, right. Uh, absolutely. yeah i definitely on the socket thing even normally on a good day i would have definitely i wouldn't have progressed this but it's it's not my decision yeah so i think um, yeah we are way forward on that let's see you know, how those discussions go now next going to the deployment models this is one you know i think i was one of the co author on this but uh, for you know this came out much earlier but we are not seeing much value in this and i mentioned in it one or two and i don't think it brings any value to the industry or to anybody at this point to progress the document so therefore as an author and also as a chair i thought you know withdrawal is the right thing i notified the co author uh and uh, i think this was also notified in the previous idea but uh, just to be you know for the process to be completed we'll close it formally and uh, we'll remove it from the this thing now on the next one is srv6 for mobile user plane i think uh, good work is going in but again uh, a couple of things i think two things uh, haven't uh, the discussions are still light maybe maybe it's uh, still more reviews are needed that is one thing i think the i think offline conversation authors wanted to include end marker support but uh, i think uh, for to eliminate any feature creep on this i want to be extremely careful here not to you know we are okay with additional documents but not bloat this document but uh, that's my view but uh, we should take uh, um, I agree that the end marker mentioned in this draft uh, make kind of a lengthy text and yeah. uh, complexity. But uh, I think uh, it would be good to have another document uh, right. Right. to describe end marker. Right. Yeah, because end marker has so many configurations like as big as, as gateway relegation, you know, all of those modes to complete that this is impossible to capture this in this document. So. I think that's one thing. But in general, sort of the when do you think we'll be able to? I know your presentation, but just quick word: what's the timeline looking like? Because you know, for closing this work. I'll mention later, but uh, let me explain a little bit. Um, uh, I think it will all be almost done in mean, main part. So I think uh, we need to improve the clarity and um, okay. readability. So okay. I think it would be uh, less of a big part. So okay. I don't think and I don't think we need much more time. Okay. So you think this needs to be run through Spring Working Group as well, or you think uh, we are not not need? Okay, all right. Okay, uh, other thing. Uh, uh, so, rest question. So, as AD, no, it doesn't need to run through, but I think we'll get a, a routing director review at some point in the process. Um, but I, I kind of want like a little bit more review in the working group. So, um, I think it'll be good, Sri, if you can take some names of people today, like who yeah, volunteered to we'll do, do this yeah. before, uh, yeah. like, you know, you go to working group last call on that. Sure. So. Okay. Uh, the next one is uh, uh, PMV6. Uh, uh, where is uh, Carlos? Yeah, Carlos. Uh, any uh, update? Quick update? One minute update on this? I know your presentation, but still. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is Carlos Bernardo. I will present later. But basically, uh, we have a couple of uh, detailed reviews since last ITF. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned there was a minor update. We we did type two updates based on the reviews that we have from Lail and from Danny. So that's been going on yeah but no discussions on the mail i think uh, this you know uh, you know before we officially you know ask for reviewers but i think you know at this point you guys need to solicit some reviewers and get some feedback yeah i, think I mean this, that, this uh, is in your quote at this point yeah i mean that we got two reviews that were posted on the main list so i agree mm -hmm. that we need more but i mean yeah. that we right, actually right. got okay. reviews sure. okay all right maybe okay 
and um, i think the fpc we will talk about this i think um, i think in general authors believe it's in a completed state but we'll talk about it and finally the anchoring i think that's also i think after carlos rewrite but pretty much you know i think at least the document looks you know much 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 better than before but still it needs uh, more reviews i think uh, uh, finally uh, one previous work item which is mnid document i think it's is approved it now it's published as rfc 8371 congratulations charlie right it's probably uh, this was first published maybe uh, like uh, you know like <laughs> <laughs> you also decades <decade. laughs> okay all right yeah. yeah so with that i think uh, we'll call for the first presentation and i think uh, it is Okay, so oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, Satoru Matsushima here, and um, I bring some update on the SRB six four mobile user plane version number zero three. I missed an uh, ITF uh, series number, so then I got an award of the uh, uh, note taker. Thank you very much. Yeah. So please next slide. Uh, it also come forward. Turn it on, no? Oops. Sorry. Thank you. So here's a summary of the update from uh, revision two to revision three. So we defined the one argument uh, as a sit as a part of the segment ID, which is called uh, args dot mob dot uh, session for the uh, uh, SRB mobile user plane that indicate the QFI and RQI and PDU session ID uh, uh, that supply as a seed argument. Uh, QFI and RQI is defined in CGPP document, but PDU session ID is actually um, not tied to uh, to the three GPP. PP specific specification, but but in the context of the 3GPP specification, we put a TID, but uh, it it could still open to other uh, mobile control plane control control plane protocol protocol. So the seat may use the argument if required by UPF. Uh, so next one is modified end dot map function. Uh, so previously, we just defined this function to swap the uh, uh, seat, uh, just only destination header. But this version includes the uh, uh, the future if the uh, the mapped uh, seat and policy, SR policy include one more uh, one or more uh, SID in the SR policy. So the third is. We added new terminology section for abbreviation and a com a convention. So that uh, makes people help to understand and to, to very SRV6 specific uh, terminology and convention. So last thing that we added new terminology section for predefined SRV6 function. So it's also helpful to the people not aware of the SRV6 terminology and the function. So that come from the, uh, uh, the spring document. So this is a brief uh, snapshot of the uh, argument of the args mob session format. It is a 40 bit uh, argument that we, you can see the uh, QFI in the, in the left and the one bit is read out, and another bit is indicate. I'm sorry, one bit indicate RQI. Uh, one bit in bit seven is uh, undefined, and uh, the rest uh, 32 bit is to indicate PDU session. In the CGPP context, it uh, it it could be filled by uh, TID. 
So next. So next step, uh, we need to extend function coverage. But uh, as uh, I talked before, the end marker will be uh, good to uh, describe in another document. And uh, the some idea already exists using uh, orbit in the SR header, or we have uh, the indicator of the SR end marker or other GTPU uh, related mes message in the, the seed. And the other is, it would be um, nice to have, but uh, if you can, it would be good if you have uh, another uh, concise example how to <laughs> utilize SRV6 to the required uh, user plane function. But I don't think it would be necessary to be in the document. So, uh, so we did uh, certain uh, improvement in terms of clarity and readability. Thank you for Charlie. And, but uh, I think we need uh, more review uh, from the working groups. So the one, of the, one of them is the uh, anchor and anchoring uh, clarification pointed out by uh, Hanu. And the other would be uh, uh, have uh, another more uh, opinion. So please let us know. So um, I'm Charlie Perkins. Could you put it back on the org.mob. Um, session slide? Yeah, that. So <clears throat> I believe that it's useful to have TEID. And I understand why it would be handy to have that as part of the um, data available to the segment routing. But args is a very, very general term. And there's, you might, it seems like to me that it would be better to find a more specific name for this. I mean, for instance, you could say, this is the TEID dot mob dot session format or something like that, because that's really what it's about is to put in the TEID and sort of for convenience, you had the QFI so you can know how to handle the flow. Uh, and then there's a special meaning to the R bit that has to do with whether or not you can infer bidirectionality for the flow. Mm -hmm. Well, that kind of stuff is not obvious to people reading this document. And the way I found out about it was by plowing through some 3GPP stuff that wasn't cited. And so um, that's not a good situation and um, I, I think it would be at least more expedient if we could find a name for this that was much, much more specific for its purpose. Thank you. Yeah, um, the concept of the, uh, this uh, naming is come from the, uh, 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 the custom of the, the, the what SRB6 document already defined. So then we uh, follow that uh, custom. But, uh, um, yeah, I think a much more clear uh, idea could improve the uh, uh, the uh, readability and, and help understand for the people. Yeah. Okay, next question. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is Kentaro Ibisawa from Toyota ITC. What, say your name again, please. Uh, Kentaro, Kentaro Ibisawa. Thank Toyota. you, note takers. Okay. Um, actually, I have two comments, and I sent two of them to the mailing list uh, this week. Um, one is that I think while trying to implement, I found that pseudocoding for NDM GTP4E is either inaccurate or or hard to understand. And uh, actually, I sent the one which I think correct. So if you could re review it and uh, update if it is. Uh, inaccurate. And one more comment is that uh, about t.m.tmap name. Mm -hmm. um, this this function is uh, translating IPv4 GTP to SRV6, which corresponds to NDM GTP 6.d for IPv6 GTP. And um, if I'm not sure if there's any reason you did not put the GTP in the name, but uh, 
if there is no reason, then I, I would suggest that we put uh, GTP in the name to qualify that uh, this is uh, about GTP and not other type of tunnel. Thank you. Thank you. I understand your uh, opinion, and uh, that exists a kind of a related to naming space. So, uh, yeah, I think we can improve. Okay. Thank Thanks you. for the feedback. Let's uh, make sure that address is, yeah, we address it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, any other? No, yeah. no. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, the so one of the things I was concerned about is the SRH insertion stuff in the in the draft. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as like you know, we we had this really long conversation in six man, and I really don't want this to draft to get ahead on that. Okay, so I have a couple of ways to resolve this. Okay, so um, one of them is put the uh, header insertion as a precondition for this to go forward. There's a draft about header insertion. Which is the uh, draft wire header insertion, right? But, but just to make sure I understand, Suresh, you're talking about the on path, the discussion on on path node inserting SRH. Correct. I thought they removed it by using a tunneling, right? Now it's no, not, the, no longer. The draft still has uh, stuff about no. SRH insertion. A very, After a tunnel, very special case. Uh, okay. Correct. So, like, and it's a May in the draft, but it's in the draft. It says May. Okay, okay. But oh, it's in the draft. That, okay. okay, I see what so, you're saying. Uh, uh, unless we know how to do this properly, I cannot progress this draft. Okay, so um, uh, as I said, a couple of ways forward: like either keep it out and, and add it in later, and when that other thing happens, or just like I, I, I'll take take care of the dependencies myself. So you keep this and let let this go on. But I want uh, a reference to draft wire in this because this draft does not have a reference to draft wire. Okay, so um, just add that. And then um, I'll keep track of the dependencies myself. But, uh, uh, and the other thing is, like you know, this thing has a strong dependency on uh, on SRV6 itself. Mm -hmm. That's one thing, and it has a dependency on uh, draft FISFIS uh, -fis network programming, mm -hmm. which is not even a working group draft anywhere. So there's like quite a bit of um, dependencies that are required. So I'm I'm a bit worried. Like, but but it, uh, the, what I wanted to say is, when you are ready, push it. Don't wait for the other things to happen. I'll make sure the other things happen before this progresses further. Okay. Yeah. Thank so you. I think the May part, yeah, I was not clear, but okay. Yeah, yeah. The, the draft yeah. specifically says like you okay. may turn on uh, yeah. SRH insertion. So I was under the impression it's only the NCAP mode now. Right now we are using the SRH, but if that is the case, we need to. It, the draft says that. So that's why uh, I, I did check. So it does say that. So just like make a decision. That's fine. Either way is fine. As long as it's consensus, I'm going to take this forward. But just remember that there's other dependencies on this. Okay. I see, thank you. I think we can deal with uh, with those issues. So um, and also dependency, uh, we can minimize the dependency to going forward the work. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Sadarasan. Now we want some reviewers. Actually, can you know? Can you guys like you know who is uh, can some of you volunteer to review this document, please? Okay. Oh. Okay. Please. Uh, okay. Can uh, probably can get the names, Carlos and okay. Okay, and and Ah, Miyasaka san, Takuya san, Thank you so much. So, okay. Thank you, Sutter. Thank you. Yeah. I think. Uh, So an update on the distributed mobility anchoring. Yeah, I don't think it's working, but it's been done. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So hi everyone. I'm Carlos Bernardo, and I will quickly review the state of uh, distributed mobility anchoring draft. So 
the status of the draft well uh, has been uh, significantly updated in London. That was the main the main uh, change for a while. And as I mentioned there, and as I mentioned in Montreal, we came from uh, 46 pages to 15, and now we are in, si in 17 pages. So we tried to reduce complexity and try to make the document simpler because also the goals of the documents were not that uh, complex. It was about introducing the distributed anchoring concept. So then in Montreal, uh, we got, uh, or after Montreal, pretty uh, after Montreal, pretty uh, soon after Montreal, we got a detailed review by Lyle. Uh, thanks for that. And uh, we addressed the comments at, uh, of that review. Uh, and as I will summarize later. And well, the draft is also available on GitHub for anyone of uh, you who want to take a look and also contribute there. So this is the overview of the current version. So basically, as I mentioned, we try to simplify uh, a lot uh, the content. And now it's basically everything around this uh, describing the three main cases for the for the anchoring, which are the mobility case, the mobility case with traffic redirection, and the mobility case with anchor relocation. Which is what I summarize on this slide. So basically, in many cases where there is no address continuity required. So basically, when you move, you change your IP address, and, and that's all. Then we have two mobility cases. One is the traffic redirection case. Well, basically, you need address continuity, and, and basically, the way you achieve that is by getting or by getting yeah by getting the traffic from the previous anchor forwarded to the current anchor. And then there is, uh, and you keep using the, the old IP address, of course. And then the, there is this uh, additional case we see called anchor relocation, where you require address continuity, but then you have real uh, mobility of anchors. And it's a bit more complex, of course. So the three cases are documented uh, with some generic diagrams trying to use simple notation. And because the first versions were a bit heavy on, on, the, on the notation, it was uh, hard to follow. So next steps, we believe that the document is stable, has gone through uh, uh, several detailed reviews, including the, the one from Lyle in the last cycle and, and the one from Marco before. It was very helpful to try to simplify the, the document. This document has been there for a long time. So I honestly believe that is the moment to make it uh, go forward or basically will never happen. That's my honest opinion. So. Of course, I'm open to get as many reviews as possible and to address the comments, but I honestly believe that we need to really go working with last call if we really want to move the document forward. Right. Yeah, thanks, Carlos. I know it's been there for a while, but it's, if you look at the last rewrite, it practically reset the whole thing, right? It's a, it was a significant rewrite. Yeah, right. but that's that was in, in London, so we've been already a couple of reviews from people right. that right. that computer right so uh, i think now is is simple to read it should be i mean it's a very simple document no no high expectations on okay. what this document is about and i think that the energy is going in the group to other topics so if we keep this thing there for a while it will probably i mean nobody right. will care so that's my main concern sure Let's close it soon, I think. From but from your point of view, you think this is technically yeah. technically, I think the technical correctness, you're absolutely sure that no issues from it. Yeah. We'll get some reviews and uh, get this code. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. So again for this document, uh, we need some reviews and uh, I think uh, Folks, can you please volunteer? We need help from the working group. Otherwise, we cannot progress documents. This is, uh, you know, I think uh, we depend on the community. So, yeah, Charlie Perkins and uh, John. John and uh, who, any, we need one more reviewer, please, at least. Marco? Marco, OK. Marco already reviewed, right? Marco already got Yeah. OK, cool, perfect, thanks. All right. Any any anyone else? All right. Thank you.
Eso. Okay, so I'm Carlos Bernardo again, presenting the proximal APS extensions for distributed mobility management. And this is what okay, so this is the outline. I will quickly go through the story as, again and a status, a very quick overview, and then next steps. If somebody wants details about the solution, there are some backup slides, but I, I think I will omit unless somebody wants to to go into details. So this is the status and story of the draft. It was adopted as working group document after London. Uh, in the 01 version, we address all the comments that we received already in the working group adoption call. Then in the 02 version that already happened uh, since Montreal, we address a Lyle detail review. And then in 03 version, uh, which is the current one, we also address the Danny's comments. I will summarize the comments that we reviewed in, a, in the next slide. So quick overview, so the document is about a network-based solution for DMM based on PMIP. So basically we push the mobility management to the to the edge at the access router level. So instead of having one single anchor, we have multiple anchors for the data plane and we have a one control plane uh, entity. So we have a centralized control plane with a kind of LMA that is called CMD and then a distributed data plane. So it's access router where the mobile node can attach to become a, a MAG from the data plane point of view and as, as an LMA for the data plane point of view for the addresses that the data router delegates to the to the mobile node. So the mobile node, each time it attached to one of these distributed entities, it will obtain an IP prefix from that anchor and it will remain getting continuity for the other addresses that it got on previous uh, access routers. So that's why these distributed entities play the role of MAG and LMA for the data plane. Okay. So the ch uh, changes since last ITF, so in 02 version that um, was basically addressing live comments, we improved terminology based on his uh, review. We added a lot of text on the registration that was uh, something that we didn't uh, focus much or enough on the previous version. And we also add a lot of clarifying text. Then 03 version that was uh, also uh, based on a detailed review from Danny. We also did a lot of uh, text improvement based on the suggestions from Danny, so thanks a lot for that. And we also tried to improve the way some procedures that were had done with figures were described in the, in the text. We have the, the figures, but the text accompanying the figures were not that as good as it should be, and we, we tried to improve that to improve the reliability. So again, we uh, we believe that the document is a stable. Of course, we will appreciate more reviews, but um, at this point, we, we as from the author's point of view, we really need to get those reviews because we don't believe there is anything else remaining to be done, but to, of course, uh, address any reviews that we, we may get. Okay, thanks, uh, Carlos. Can you talk about the implementation status? Implementation status, well, we have an implementation for quite a long time ago because we actually shown that implementation twice in ITF, um, mm -hmm. like four or five years ago, I don't remember. So implementation, there is implementation available and we actually show it there. I don't remember in which ITFs it was in Berlin, 2014, that was one of it. And the other one, I don't remember. So there is code available and there is isn't publicly available on GitHub. So it's uh, not, a, I mean, it's a public implementation. So if people want to try, it's available. Okay. So let's get some additional reviews. I think last time you asked for a few reviews, they signed up. I think uh, you yeah, need we your. Hmm? Last time we got two reviews, Danny two reviews. And, and Lyle. Yeah. So. so I think we need additional reviews on this, folks. Again, who can volunteer? Folks, yeah, John, thank you. Did Marco review? Marco review? 
not yet. I don't know if we want to be overloaded with more, but uh, that will be appreciated, of course. Marco is not even looking, I know. OK. Oh, OK, perfect. Yeah, thank you, Marco. <laughs> All right. Yeah. OK, thanks, uh, Carlos. Okay. I think, uh, yeah. And I think uh, so Arashmid wanted to present remotely. So I don't know if, uh, let's see if he can. Uh, I'll try if he's there, otherwise we'll need to. Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. Pablo, that's a use case as well? Yeah. Arashmit? My name is Arashmit Akhavain. Uh, I'm going to talk yeah, about... Uh, yes? No, okay. okay, perfect. Yeah, now you may have to repeat. I don't know if you said something. Yeah, now we can see you. All right, excellent. Uh, okay. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Arashman Dakavain. Um, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the 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 demo that we put together for the SRV6 user plane in Mobile Core, uh, based on uh, the user mobility uh, uh, draft that uh, Saturson and the rest have put together. Um, uh, as uh, can we go to the next slide, please? The the effort was uh, was uh, put together, but the, the park was to, uh, put together as an effort by uh, a few people around here. Uh, Chen Chen, uh, Pablo uh, helped a lot uh, uh, to provide the base code for this, and uh, Chen Chen provide the uh, actual implementation of the rest of the code that we put together, put the setup together, and uh, uh, during. Uh, London and uh, Montreal. I uh, showed you the the progression uh, from uh, from existing GTP based uh, system uh, to an SRV6 based system. Um, the the POC that we put together basically uh, uh, contains the first uh, two steps in the in the set of the demos that we're going to put together as we go forward. Uh, next, please. Um, yeah, so this is this is what we're going to cover. So uh, the the uh, the starting point for us is basically a set of uh, uh, SRv6 gateways, uh, and the reason we chose this approach is to show that we can actually drop the SRv6 data plane in uh, in place of GTP without changing uh, the the control plane, three GPP control plane. So this is go this goes back to the mandate that three uh, GPP put forward, CT4 in three GPP put forward uh, for us to only touch the uh, the data plane and the, and the control plane was out of the scope and based on that we we picked up this approach to show uh, that uh, we can actually use SRV6 and smoothly migrate the the existing GTP based uh, user plane uh, to uh, to SRV6 based uh, user plane uh, next please Next set of the slides. So uh, uh, I'm going to talk about like this is this is how things are going to work in in the 5G. Uh, I don't have a, a 5G setup just yet, but if this was supposed to be done in the 5G network, we have an SMF up there that uh, uh, we're going to be using uh, with the N4 interface to connect to UPFs. And then we're going to drop two uh, SRV6 gateway right in the middle. Um, the SRV6 gateway could be virtual, uh, could be physical boxes, or at the end, they could actually get incorporated into the UPFs uh, so that we don't need an actual uh, virtual uh, uh, a box or an, another entity in the middle of the uh, network. So the idea is basically to 
to pick up the uh, the GTP packet as they come in, uh, pick up the source address, destination address, and the GTP uh, uh, tunnel ID, and pack them into the uh, into the into the SID. And since in this particular scenario, and um, perhaps for a, for a long while, we're going to have uh, to deal only with two UPFs. Uh, therefore, we, we we will simply using the IPv6 destination address uh, as as our SID. Um, to to uh, send this information across the across the network. Uh, once we get the the packet on SR uh, gateway two, then we we pick up the destination address, we decode it into into its original GTP format, and ship it to the to the UPF uh, for processing. So the UPFs in this scenario will basically do not know that there is uh, there is any G, uh, SRV6 in the middle. The the control plane in 3GPP remains uh, intact, and uh, this is simply uh, changing the data plane without the control plane to satisfy 3GPP requirements. Uh, next, please. So the idea basically applies to today LTE network as well, uh, we, and this is what we, we used in our uh, proof of concept. We have an E node B, and we got a, a combined SPGW, uh, and that's uh, the link that we are showing. This is, uh, of course, is N3 that I'm showing, not the N N9. Uh, and the reason for this is because we are using open source uh, software that combines the SPGW, and, did it, and we didn't want to spend too much time um, decoupling the the service gateway from the packet gateway, and uh, and that's why we we try to show the same. Uh, type of uh, uh, work on the N3 interface, uh, which is also applicable easily to, to N9. Again, the same idea, the GTP tunnel uh, extends from E node B to SPGW, and we, we do the same type of decoding uh, uh, as we did in 5G in, in, in 4G LTE network and uh, to accomplish the, the work. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, this is the this is the setup uh, that we are using. We are using OAI open source software uh, along with VPP modified version of the VPP SRV6 code. Uh, there is a USRP uh, uh, ETHOS B200 with a phone that is uh, connected to the to the system. Uh, we got a couple of Wireshark uh, uh, points that actually to to uh, to show the packet trace to actually show the conversion that happens uh, right after the E node B and uh, right before uh, the, the Packets enter the 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 second uh, second routing uh, um, gateway. We use a physical box as our uh, gateway, uh, a virtual box as our uh, second uh, gateway, and uh, the the second VM, the third uh, server, uh, is a combination of uh, service gated packet gateway, MME, and HSS. This is the bundle that we got from HSS, and I uh, I have a more uh, elaborate version of this thing in my lab, but uh, we didn't want to mock around with the OAI, OAI software packaging, and uh, we basically took it as it was. Again, you will see that you know the packets actually arrive as a as a GTP tunnel um, packet to to the first um, uh, service gate uh, to um, the first uh, segment routing uh, gateway, and then get translated uh, across, uh, and then get decoded on the other side. Um, next, please. So a couple of a uh, couple of screenshots uh, that actually shows the uh, the ping uh, to to the internet. Uh, the, the 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 far left basically is the is the outside of the E node B. As you can see, the GTP tunnels I highlighted uh, the information that is coming in, the source address, destination address. Uh, you got the UDP uh, twenty one fifty two port, and then uh, the the TEID um, on one side. OAI on on one side uses incremental TEIDs, on the other side it uses uh, the the random number as a TEID, as I show you in the next slide. And the middle guy basically is the the, the edge of the, um, uh, the second. Uh, segment routing uh, packet. You see that you know the, 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 we pack this information into the into the SID. Uh, we got the source address, the destination address, and the TUID packed into the SID along with an IP prefix that that uh, that uh, that uh, is at the beginning of the SID. Coming out of the um, coming out of the uh, service uh, uh, SR gateway two at the beginning of the and uh, entering the 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 uh, uh, packet gateway, uh, the the packet has been returned to to its GTP format and uh, we process the packet at the UPF as if uh, nothing really happened. So the, the UPF, the idea is that the UPFs will not see any any control plane changes. Next slide, please. 
and this is the uh, this is the reverse traffic coming out from the SPGW going to the e -Node B. As you can see, we are just doing the exact opposite. The TEID here is a bit more elaborate because, as I said, the OAI, OAI software basically uh, randomizes the, the TEID on on a, on a way from uh, service gateway to to e -Node B. And but the, the process is identical. We we basically send the GTP packet to to SR gateway number two, where it basically gets uh, packed into the SID and shipped to the e -Node B. Uh, the, uh, by the time it gets to the e -Node B on the other side, uh, the packet basically has been modified to its GTP format by the SR gateway one, and the, the e -Node B basically receives a GTP, GTP uh, packet. Uh, so I believe Chen Chen is in the room. Uh, he uh, probably right after this is going to go and set up the, the, the demo outside the room on a, on a desk or something. We have a compact version of this demo that we can actually show uh, to people who are interested. So I encourage people to go and have a look and uh, by all means provide us with comments uh, uh, we need your comments to actually go forward with the next step I the next step of this uh, demo will perhaps deal with uh, a combined mixed uh, IPv6 IPv4 equipments again this is the first phase of um, migrating uh, the aim of this uh, this park is to show the first phase uh, of the migration path from the existing uh, GTP-based uh, uh, system to an SRV6. Uh, the next step would be showing that, okay, so once we have done certain uh, equipments, uh, we'll turn to IPv6. We will uh, perhaps will show a, a mixed IPv6, IPv4 um, uh, network, uh, and we show how, how things can actually interwork between the two, two domains. Okay, outstanding. So very good. Uh, any questions? Yeah, uh, serious question. So I have a couple of questions, right? So first one is the uh, the SR gateway to prefix. So do you assume that it's going to be a slash 32 prefix? Because like anything longer will not work, right? Because there's like 32 bit each IP addresses and then 32 bit EID. So you need a slash 32 for every node that is yeah. in the system, right? Yes, uh, for, 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 for this particular GTP interworking, uh, we have to actually uh, set aside some space for the, uh, for the source address, destination address, and, and the TEID. So the rest can be basically the, the, is, is allocated to the, to the prefix, um, uh, which, which probably works for, for, uh, for many of the networks right now. OK. Uh, and the second thing, I found it curious, you're swapping the addresses order. Is there any reason for that? No, I just wanted to make sure that I'm following the the, the, uh, the draft uh, user mobility the user mobility draft because there's a there's an encoding in there that has been been suggested. I'm, I'm following that basically. Okay. Um, uh, however, uh, one, one one quick point though uh, the, the 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 structure of the SID, uh, in generally speaking, uh, the structure of the SID, we can suggest uh, suggest a structure in our in our in our drafts, uh, and and IETF can actually propose that thing. But I believe that at the end, it's going to be three GPP who's going to decide us or uh, how how this SID structure is going to be uh, done. So uh, what we do in IETF is suggestions to to three GPP. It would be pr probably changed once it gets to see it. Uh, it gets to the to the three GPP, uh, and they will decide how to, how to restructure these things. Okay. Um, third is the I think the most important question. So what happens if you get a V6 GTP packet? Like if you have a V6 better on there and you get a V6 GTP packet. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. The next, the next step of this demo is going to cover that because we will getting the the mix IPv4 and IPv6 basically packet, and uh, at that point the IPv6 will, uh, will will get an SRH. So the SRH with one state will basically go in. No, but how do you carry the TEID? Like so, the it this thing will this all the things you put in there will be inside uh, SID. Uh, you know, yeah, if if I'm carrying if I'm using GTP inside ipv6 then of course i don't have uh, enough room to actually do this then i have to actually create another sid within the srh and carry it okay cool thanks okay very good any other questions okay excellent um, so arashmit what are the next steps so, so your implementation will continue to spend uh invest yes. time so, this, yeah? uh, we are planning actually to continue with this, and uh, and I have already received interest from uh, several companies to actually uh, work on this with us, um, okay. and uh, hopefully the next uh, the next demo will be a collaboration with be between different companies, and we would have more names on the on the on the park. Okay, so I think uh, it's good to document any issues that I you know as part of this effort. I'm pretty sure your observations and all of that, right? Maybe. One of these meetings will get, you know, another meeting where you can present those issues or whatever specific issues that. Absolutely, yeah, sure. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, this question again. So, uh, I. So, what's the plan? Like, do you want to do any work in ITF for this, or do you just want to feed this back into Satoru Sun's draft as like results? Because I, I see like a lot of work to be done here in 3GPP and not here. That's how I see it. Yes, yes. So the idea is to basically closely tie this up with Satoru Sun uh, draft and then uh, take this to the next step, which is the 3GPP CT4 and basically create the uh, create the uh, mo uh, some 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 momentum in there. Okay, sounds good. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm thinking, to Rishmet. I think uh, I think it has to be more like a feedback. I think you know. I think whatever this investigation that we are doing, it can be a great input to 3GPP. So I yes. think, uh, yeah, yes. mostly they are the final consumer and they are going to define the specification. But but this exactly. investigation exactly. has to go there. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was I was I was uh, alluding to the fact that you know yes we can actually suggest all sort of structures into the SID, but I would like to actually uh, when I when we go to CT4 I want to mention that they are the one who are going to be having the final say in defining all these structures. We are just showing them the way. They will they will have the chance to actually standardize this the way they like it. All right, Arishmit, time for sleep. Good night. Thank you very much, Arish. Thanks a lot. And again, the, the demo is outside, uh, and uh, we are preparing it uh, for you guys to actually see if you're interested. Sure. Thank you. All right. Next, we have the FPC update from Marco. I think um, so. A tremendous amount of efforts went into this document. I think. Um, I think, uh, but. Uh, uh, from the chair's point of view, I think the situation is, uh, you know, something uh, like this. We are not clear exactly, you know, where we are. I think, you know, Marco, please. Yeah. It's yeah. about this slide. I remember yeah. it here is, so it mentions one chair. So I'm curious, is this you or Deping? <laughs> Deping. <laughs> so you're clear about it. So that, that helps a lot. So let me just, so since slide cannot be here, just about um, recap and uh, the status. So we went through 12 revisions. That's the version you find on the repository right now. We put quite some effort in making the core part clear, which describes the operation and um, information models in the back. We still have the young model. So um, since a while, we have Charlie on board who put some effort in making the core part clear. So um, it doesn't help if authors say it's it's ready for working group last call. So we want non-authors to understand what's written in the core part, and that's why we need reviews. We got a light review from, from Carlos, thanks a lot for that. Um, we, we need a little bit more review on a deep dive on, on the information model. Um, so if this is understandable, reasonable, so that kind of feedback would help us a lot to give green light to proceed. Right. Right? So I think another maybe the key one of the key burning questions seems to be about whether the Yang model should be separated out. What's your view on that, uh, Marco? Yeah. Sorry, the Yang you... model should be separated out, or would that help in reviews? Or I'm trying to see because any time you know it's hard to get reviewer commitment on a hundred page document. I think that's that's a fact, right? I think. Yeah, it is a big document, right? I'm just thinking to really, you know, for the time being, is it okay to break that, remove the Yang stuff, and maybe, you know, at so least maybe get some Maybe we videos. can separate this discussion. Yeah. I think it's orthogonal. So people getting this document will not start reading the Yang models. They want to start from the beginning to right. see what right. the document right. is about, what the solution does. So they start reading the core part. So I think separating or keeping the data model together with information model and operational description um, that's a separate discussion. Okay, fair point. Yeah. Charlie or Suresh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Suresh Krishnan. So I, I did do like a sad reading the document already. I read it. So uh, nothing really crazy in there. So like it's, I haven't done like a critical review of the document, which I will when Sri pushes the button. Um, but I didn't see, I think the document has improved quite a bit like from the last time I read it and it is much bigger too. But um, I, I do think it's going to be challenging in, in uh, IETF. Uh, when it goes to IESG, because like the larger the document, the larger the attack surface, and like more comments people are gonna have, and I I, I don't have a good suggestion of trimming it down. Like you know maybe like Sri said, maybe this this is something you can discuss like with something, and probably like then that separates out the expertise that somebody requires. But that's also a negative thing if you split it out because the other person has to still read the, the non Yang part anyway to understand the Yang part, right? So I, I, I'm pretty neutral on this. So if you want to keep this together or not, but right. I, I, I personally don't see any major issues in the document other than it not getting review. That's like what worries me. 
I'll I'll try to get another review outside the working group. Like when it, when it hits me, I'll try to get a review on this. But um, and I'll 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 send the AD well because I do have like I did have questions and right. everything. I'll put it in. But yeah, I try to get some reviews in the working group. So maybe I'm thinking this has a lot to do with policy. Like you know, maybe Dime guys might be like you know good reviewers, right? You think uh, unfortunately Yon is not there, but maybe somebody from some folks from Dime. What do you think? Like it's it's a it's a pretty quiet working group again. I know. Like it, it's really like, you know, it's not like useful, but maybe I can push like a Yang doctor review or something, at least for that part, right? That's something we can probably uh, try to shoot for. So that, that part gets done. But even the Yang doctor has to read right. the rest of the document. So it's not that they just check the Yang model, right? Because they need to understand the right. thing as well. But, but, but in general, I think this document went through a lot of, I think, you know, thanks to, you know, Marco, Sato-san, and Lyle and, and others, and right? Lyle's I think yeah. tremendous amount of work. I think it's just that reviewers is, uh, yeah, holding back. Like, uh, we've seen this. This is like a common design pattern. Like, you know, we saw um, L2SM, right? Th there's a document. People are just tired of the, the whole working group was tired, and they just managed to just get this past yeah, the finish yeah, yeah. line and died, right? That kind of level of... Uh, thing which was again like 150 something plus page right, right. Uh, document right so I, I just I want the working group to keep going but like I want like people to review it too right no fair point yeah oh, just a yeah. small Welcome. comment here so I think um, it's a good proposal to go also out of this working group and ask people with more policy background than mobility yeah. background to have a look at this okay thank you Charlie I, uh, I'm Charlie Perkins and I really really think we ought to split the document and I think the reality would be that uh, the, the um, non-Yang part would get done before the Yang part is done and so people we would get a solid um, architectural and information model uh, done that could then be you might, uh, shown how the information model is applicable to PMIP and, and 3GPP uh, architectures just the fact that the information model encompasses both of those shows the power of it and also um, the, well, for instance, I mean, somebody might only be interested in the PMIP model for the Yang stuff or only be interested in the 3GPP part. But anytime I'm, if somebody asks me to review a 150 page document, <laughs> I, something inside of me is saying no. I don't, I'm not going to do that. But um, so that's already maybe that's just me. But I think a lot of people feel that way. Right. Fair point, Charlie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, question, Charlie, uh, stay here. So, which of these two do you think should be canonical? canonical. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so let's say we progress one thing and we start playing with the other thing. Right, and it kind of gets out of sync. Oh no, no. I I think clearly the Yang stuff would have to be uh, considered to be um, subordinate to the main part of the document. Mm -hmm. Right. That's one way to look at it. The other yeah. way would be like one of them is more precise. Right? So, well, if, what, if what, so, so as I said, like that's kind of the issue, right? Like so, uh, Suresh again. So the, somebody could easily consider it the other way, saying the Yang is more precise, so it should be the the final definition. That's what I'm saying. That's something to be considered too, right? I'm not taking a position one way or another, but that's something the working group needs to decide. Has that happened in any other working group that they would have the Yang stuff before they decided what the information model was? No, like usually it's together, right? Like, and, and if it becomes big, then it becomes difficult, like you say, right? But if you split it up and then they get desynced somehow, right? I don't see why they would be. I don't see why they would lose synchronization because you said no, the Yang no, is nobody would nobody would work on the Yang model unless they cared about the information model in the first place. Okay, maybe I think uh, let's uh, get some feedback from Benoit as well. You know, Benoit might have some. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. I think we'll uh, discuss with authors and uh, Depang AD and we'll move forward on that. Uh, next one is essentially Shunsuke san or. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Shunke, yeah. There's a user plane protocol and architectural analysis.
uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am Shinsuke Homa, NTT. Uh, I'll uh, report the update of user plane uh, protocol and architecture analysis on CTPP 5G system. So, and uh, thank you very much for lively discussion on email list. Uh, we think uh, the contents uh, were improved by the discussion. I think. Uh, okay, next slide. Okay, next slide. You can use this. Okay. So firstly, uh, I will explain the background of this work. So this work is uh, related to user plane protocol study in CTPP uh, CT4, and this is uh, be became uh, a reason reply, uh, part of the reason reply from uh, DMN working group to uh, CTPP CT4. And uh, this document has mainly two motivations. First is uh, unifying the understanding level of ITF to uh, specifications and, and architecture of CCP uh, 5G system. And second is showing to 3GP, uh, showing to 3GPP that ITF has enough level uh, about, uh, uh, enough uh, enough knowledge about 5G specifications and our proposal uh, have enough value to be considered. And uh, in this work, uh, we analyze the uh, GTPU specification and uh, architecture requirement of uh, 5G user plane. And uh, also we extracted some evaluation aspects uh, from the uh, user plane uh, architecture requirements. So this is history of this document. Uh, we presented the work, this work uh, in both CTPP and ITF in the last July. And uh, we updated this document twice uh, since the last ITF meeting. So, major. Oh, yeah. Uh, major updates are listed in the following uh, two slides. So, in the first division, uh, we modified the mainly modified the GPU observation uh, based on the feedback from CCPP CT4 as uh, LS out. So for example, uh, GTPU is uh, basically a point-to-point -point pro tunneling protocol, but uh, some implementation uh, will be had as multi point to point protocol, uh, tunneling protocol. Or well, uh, there are no definition uh, about the order of uh, extension header, but uh, the specification document uh, describes a note to recommend uh, putting uh, QFI information at the first extension header, and we describe the note uh, in the uh, document. Uh, in the second uh, revision, uh, we reflected the uh, feedback uh, on the discussion on email list, a mailing list. So, for example, uh, we received a question about uh, termination point of GTPU, and so we described uh, the uh, concrete uh, description about termination point of GTPU. GTPU is used on N3 interface between G node B and UPF and N9 interface between different UPFs. Uh, sorry, uh, this slide has a lot. Uh, this uh, update uh, provided at second revision, so version number should be uh, zero two. Uh, please note that. Okay. And uh, in the uh, second revision, so we uh, provided a supplementary explanation about something. So, for example, uh, about regarding to IP connectivity, we described that uh, uh, in terms of uh, wide coverage, IPv6 would be better. And uh, we should consider how to interconnect with uh, legacy networks. Or, uh, 5G system allowed to uh, uh, distribute uh, UPFs and uh, select uh, the destination UPF uh, flexibly. So uh, it may may be able to achieve uh, optimizing routing uh, like uh, ID lock protocols. So, but uh, the uh, specific 
uh, specific uh, processes are not defined. So uh, IDLog maybe uh, propose to uh, the usage uh, as a solution. Well, uh, we received a point uh, that uh, uh, there are no summary about uh, network slicing architecture, and we added uh, the overview of network slicing architecture in 3GPP. So in uh, 3GPP, uh, slice is composed of, uh, fundamentally composed of uh, SMF, uh, LANs, UPFs, and the DNS. But uh, CSPP uh, focuses on just only mobility management, and so transport network or other external ne network uh, out of scope of uh, CSPP study. So uh, finally, uh, I have talk about the status and next steps. So we uh, caught up feedback from both ITF and CSPP, and we we believe that uh, we received uh, enough. Uh, feedback, uh, and we would like to uh, request a working group adoption of this document. Okay. And uh, it's just a question. Uh, I would like to confirm whether this document can be an information RFC. Uh, if so, uh, we can polish this document, uh, this contents more. Right. Thank you, Shinsuke san. Uh, that was a good update so i think uh, before we open up for the questions i think yeah yeah maybe Suresh. yeah Suresh question so uh the one like i'm fine with like you know adopting this if needed but i i just don't have a visibility into what's happening in 3gpp regarding this so i kind of want some kind of official communication so if satarasan is there or if you're there um probably like you know get another ls out from there and probably get it on the dependency list because if 3GPP is going to make a decision based on this, I want to see it on the dependency list, the official dependency list that um, comes out from the work items in 3GPP. Okay, so um, I, I I can talk to you too. We can talk to Gonzalo and uh, and Georg to make Georg sure. Is here, right? Georg. Yeah, Georg is. Yeah. So we we can see because it's not on there right now. So like we can do it, make sure that like you know 3GPP knows it and we know it. And Georg, you want to say something? So, so was there any uh, discussion at study paper or any contribution to 3GPP on based on this? Yeah, uh, as far as I know, uh, the uh, creation of uh, study uh, item, uh, study document, mm -hmm. uh, is pre preceded in a uh, proceeded in CGPP CT4. So uh, it refers this document. Right. So, right. so okay. I just yeah, want this Georg Maya, I'm the 3GPP liaison. Um, Adding this to the study will not help you for the dependencies because the dependencies are only for normative uh, specifications. Right. And so, I mean, it, it doesn't put any pressure from 3GPP side to IETF to progress this work as long, practically, as long as CT4 hasn't taken a decision which way to go. So, um, on the other hand, of course, have to be careful how to phrase it, but I think there are some there are some people uh, in CT4 that um, are sometimes doubtful how far the work in IETF in general has progressed. So everything that gets working group adopted and sort of gets um, gets the indication that you are working on that and you are progressing that um, makes the decisions in CT4, of course, easier because they see there is real people behind that and there is also interest from ITF right. behind it. So from that perspective, not from the dependencies, but from the, the signal that you are sending towards 3GPP, it might be a good idea to um, to adopt such okay. work. Thanks. Yeah, I think, um, th thanks, Georg. I think uh, that helps a uh, couple of things. I think from my point of view, I think the document is uh, very well written. I think uh, it's a good work, actually. I think it can be a good informational spec. I don't think it can, in my opinion, it should not be a standard spec, rather, but that needs to be discussed. But uh, yeah, that's uh, the uh, Right, so Rish Krishnan. So if I understand, OK, so now I have a better view after like Georg spoke, right? So then I have a different issue right so if the only use for this document is to guide the study item what is the archival value of this document in the rfc series right because once the 3gpp study item is done then 3gpp 
just moves on, right? So who is this document useful for in, in the IETF? So that is like the second question. We can, we can do this all during the working mailing list discussion, right? But that would be my question. So the, if it doesn't ha have value by itself to guide 3GPP and 3GPP is not waiting on it and they're doing their own evaluation, then I don't see the value in publishing this. I, I really see the value of this document but not publishing it at RFC. So keep the document updated, like we can even adopt it as a working group item, keep it going, but then after the decision is made, we just drop it, right? That's kind of just setting the expectations right up front. Okay, yeah, so. I think, um, Suresh, I think uh, if you look at the IPv6 recommendations for 3GPV back then, uh, 2005, it's published. It, it's published, right? Yes. I think there is archival value in my opinion, but I think- uh, uh, It's it a difference. who the consumer, is it for IEDF community, is it for 3GPV community? I understand, but the, there's a difference, okay? So the, the document series is talking about is, I think, 33, RFC 3314, okay? 3GPP asked us, okay, what is the prefix length you want to recommend? It's a clear question. We gave them an answer. It's 64. This one, 3GPP didn't come and ask us, hey, can you recommend us a protocol? If they did, that would be a different reference, like Georg said, okay? So 3GPP is doing an independent evaluation. They're not asking us to do an evaluation. So do you understand the difference? No, I think, but uh, I think if you look at the analysis, finally, you're not recommending one specific thing, right? I think, you know, it's a, it's a uh, that analysis is what the value is. It's not about a specific protocol recommendation, right? Yes. Am I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. I understand, so, but 3 gpp is making the decision in the study item, right? So I'm, I'm not, I'm, as I'm saying, this is very, very valuable. I, I don't yeah, have a yeah, question yeah. in that. Right. But if the right. decision is going to be made in a 3GPP study item, irrespective of what we write here, right? Yeah. Then I don't see the value. That's right. what I'm trying to say. I, I, I don't know if, like, if, like, what the dynamic is going to be going forward. But if 3GPP is not expecting us to give them, like, an analysis of, like, what's good or what's wrong and things like that, then I don't see the value. So I think if you go back to the LS statements that we have received from 3GPP, so far they have talked about the work item, that's the study that's happening there. Correct. In general, they they encouraged IETF to make progress on, on these work items. So based on that, I think we need to make a call whether this kind of work has value, whether should I, is it just a publishing a draft? Is it good enough for publishing? It should be published as information or is one thing that the working group can that's, that's fine. That's working group can decide. Like I'm, I'm not going to stop the working group yeah. from deciding. But I, I do see like a hard time justifying a publication of an RFC for this, especially since it has no archival value. So like one of the things, if you look at like, let's say the last six telechats, right? There's a lot of documents that have been sent back to working groups because they don't have archival value. Not that it doesn't have value. So right. one of them right. being an SCTP document, right? Which contains probably like five years of work of like things like clarifications and errors that have been discovered that got sent back to TSV WG recently because people didn't see the archival value of it. So like right. who, so who will read this document in five years? That's the thinking, right? Period. Like, I'm not going to say anything more. So I'm not going to like, you know, like, you know, push something through the working group here. Working group can decide, but that's what I'm, I'm giving you up front, Fair like points. how Fair this points. is valued yeah. later. Okay. I think let's, uh, yeah. Thank you. Start the song. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Satoru Matsushima, uh, CGPP Hato. Uh, I'm a reporter of the CT4 user plan protocol study. And I think that the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the document is really valuable for us because the, 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 we already have a, uh, uh, input from an IETF side. So the, the all of the uh, idea of the user plan protocol. So that's, that I'm not sure the, whether the IETF is aware of the, uh, uh, CGPP activity. So that, the, the document shows the, uh, as, a good level of understanding, so CGPP is that good. But after that, I think it would be valuable uh, if the uh, uh, this document could be a good reference to uh, introduce what the CGPP 5G architecture look like, and also the much deeper level of the GTPU. So that would be uh, the value. Kiran, uh, just a follow-up question. Will 3GPP ever refer to this document? Anybody can answer. <laughs> Because the uh, has value. That that's my that's the only concern I have with this paper. I think you you cannot assume that three GPP will reference it, mm -hmm. and you you cannot assume that we will review it. Right? right. So any content will be your content. It will will not uh, imply any changes in in our architecture. It it might be used as a guidance. That is fine. But um, I agree in, in that sense with Suresh that uh, the guidance will mostly come from the study we are currently doing in CT4. Again, 
uh, the CT4 study is not the whole business. Right. Once, if CT4 agrees on something, that doesn't mean we will adopt it. There needs to be other working groups uh, included in this discussion and so on, but it, you have a good chance then. So if this document is valuable for your own purposes, then I think you should go forward with it and you should show that by some way of adoption or whatever. I'm not so familiar in detail with, with the processes, but please don't uh, assume that from CGBP side, uh, we will reference back to that or we'll review it. So, so maybe let me ask you a question, Georg. Would you, would 3GB object to, you know, IETF publishing this document? Yeah, maybe let, let, no, no, let, let, let's hear from that. I think. No, would, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, first, let's say, would, would anybody raise an eyebrow? Let's say it that yeah. way, right? We, yeah. we, we will not, uh, and I, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, it's practically you doing here what we are doing in our study. So, yeah, fine. Go ahead, and you you need to know this. If it if it in the end should be an RFC, that's well, that's you have that's to decide, decision. right? Sure. But uh, um, this is this is um, nothing. We, we we have nothing uh, against you doing work, especially if it's 3GBP related. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, Dave. Okay. Yep. So, um, the, the 3GPP is not going to say no to anything. We can do like something which says, like, should people live on Mars and publish a draft and 3GPP won't say anything. So that's not a good question to ask. No, okay? I think, uh, no, no, I no but it's not three. Okay. So like, I'm, I'm not going to go there. I'm, yeah. I'm going to like talk something to Satoru san. Okay. So imagine I'm, I'm giving you like a completely crazy alternative scenario. Okay. So working group works on this, adopts the document, finishes the document. She does a working group last call. Everybody's happy with it. Okay. And then we take the text of this document put it in a liaison statement, send it to 3GPP, okay? That's option A. Other thing is we go through the RFC publication process, seven months later, we have an RFC. Do you see a difference in value between these two? That's what. That's my question, okay? I don't know what the answer is, but I want you to think of that question in mind because that's what I'm trying to yeah, drive at. I think with that logic, I think, you know, one. Can, I'm not saying, you know, by the way, this should be published or not. I think, you know, I think that's a separate discussion. I think, but, I do want to, you know, you know, you know, highlight the fact that the work that we are doing here, you know, this has some value, right? If you don't publish work, you know, we can as well, as well close down the working group. I think that's that's my viewpoint. I think you know, in that sense, you know, if any if a document has value, if the other SDO is going to use it, we rather publish it. Make sure the technical if after, it. yeah, if they use it, yeah, absolutely. The yeah. Okay. So, uh, Dave Allen Erickson, I'm confused here. All of the discussions leading up to the liaison was they asked us for specific protocols we were working on. Uh, it was agreed that we were not going to send them analysis. We have a draft whose purpose is to attempt to say we understand this well enough that the analysis we provide is credible. We liaised it to them. My understanding, and based on some of the dialogue I saw, was they liaised back saying we didn't want analysis, but we are persisting. So why, what no, are we doing? No, no, I think, uh, Dave, clarification, right? I think what we said in the past was we are not going to recommend one specific protocol and say that, you know, this is the protocol that you need to use. We said that we are not going to go there. But yeah, What I mean, we said was we are going to do technical evaluation. We are going to provide the technical feedback. That's, I'm, that's what we're I'm kind of encountering this everywhere where somebody liaises is asking a very specific question, which typically is like, what can we consume in the time frame of release 16 or whatever? And everybody's sending them the moon in response. Um, and this to me just seems to be another example of it. I remember reading quite specifically the ask that CT4 liaised here. What we sent them back, I do not believe vaguely corresponded to it. And they called us on it. And we're, we're, we're persisting on going down this path. I don't okay. think this is a good idea. Okay, thank you. Final comment. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm a bit. Uh, it's it's a bit strange. You you're mixing these two types of work so strongly up in your argumentation. I mean, we have the CT4 work, and that's rolling. And right. I I mean, the only way you can interfere with that is that you make your your technical drafts that are under evaluation they're more stable. That I guess that's the un, besides that. Uh, we might have liaison exchanges on on certain dedicated issues. That that's one thing. But this is your your work. This is your own uh, uh, working group uh, evaluation and so on. Why shouldn't you go on with that? I I what what I don't understand 
is what's the relation of this to 3GPP that's all the time mentioned here, like 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 impact to 3T4. I don't see that. I, I see that this is value, valuable work on standalone, right. what you're doing. Yeah, ever I, okay. share okay. I think that's a great comment. I, I, yeah. I think we need to close down. Yeah, I think uh, time, final call. Dave again. Yeah. Just very quickly, at the very beginning, the, the purpose of the draft was explicitly stated in the context of the relation to 3GPP. It was not a DMM work item. So okay. if it's Thank to be useful for you. DMM, and it's the, in the context of the IETF, they need to change the purpose they're advertising. Sure. Because right now, it makes no sense. Okay, thank you. Final, final comment. Yeah, so <laughs> true. Um, yeah, I believe the, the, the motivation of this work it comes from the situation in the ITF. Uh, so we have a lot of the uh, very interesting comment whether uh, someone said the oh I I couldn't read the uh, word document I just see the text uh, we need text I don't have a, a Microsoft license to read the word <laughs> document so that's why we need to uh, the that describe the what's the CGPP system look like in the ITF manner. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank you, Shinko san uh, I think we'll. Um, so, okay, how many? Uh, j just I think uh, we are. Shin, we are not going to issue the adoption call this time, Shinko san Okay. Okay. Uh, next, Marco. This is a new draft that uh, Marco Levish and number two published and uh, update on that. Yeah, draft, uh, yeah, please. All right, so this is a new draft as three announced and um, it's actually complementing the discussion we had so far on the data plane <coughs> protocols by applying the protocols um, on the table to apply uh, to the N6 interface uh, which is a little bit under specified in 3GPP, maybe for good reasons. So, next slide. Ah, can I? You can, please. It's not perfect, but yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, briefly, the background and motivation. So far, we um, discussed the <clears throat> new data plane protocols <laughs> in the context of the liaison segment uh, with CD4. And the candidates are other tunneling protocols, idle lock separation protocols, locator rewrite protocols. Um, so these <clears throat> protocols apply uh, to the E9 interface. That's what the study is about, right? So um, everything in between the anchor user plane function and the actual data network, which since uses the, the services, um, is assumed to be <clears throat> plain IPP that was being routed. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. Do I need to repeat? No. <laughs> okay. no, no you're good. All right. Um, so that, that's what the draft is about. So um, in the view of future use of 5G network and in the view of <clears throat> efficient support for industry verticals, we see that there may be some demand for more flexible deployment options for customization and also um, taking some control on traffic um, steering and policing on that N6 interface. Um, so what this draft is about, it enables decoupling of um, the anchor UPFs from the actual data networks for more flexible deployment and uh, enable the control and enforcement of traffic steering policies. Um, <clears throat> on um, on the N6 interface, in particular on transport network nodes, which are associated with the data networks, and that's not being discussed in 3GPP. So, can we adjust this one? Oh, sorry. Um, so, two brief use cases just to motivate this. Um, so, this is a deployment per today's 3GPP directions, and um, mobile applications may be associated and take services from distributed applications in distributed data centers. So um, 3GPP 5G control plane allows um, setting up multiple uh, <clears throat> user plane function anchors, like you see here, to talk to the different data networks. Um, so these UPFs get enforced um, traffic steering rules for uplink traffic to achieve that this traffic reaches um, the data networks at, on the right way. but 
there is no guarantee that downlink traffic happens in the same way. So there may be kind of um, misleading route uh, taking the wrong UPF uh, in case uh, the two N6 paths are, are on the shared links. So we need some control on the downlink routes uh, inside the data networks here to um, actually select the most suitable UPF for downlink traffic. That's one case. Another one is a little bit more um, dynamic in the view of applying. Let me just. Oh, sorry. That's sorry. your role. Right? I know, it's my um, Just as <clears throat> one example, one, one case where we apply a uh, user plane function serving as a PDS session anchor to the very edge of the network and uh, just to support um, services in the edge cloud. Here you see a connected car scenario. So um, in addition, uh, services running in the central cloud use this PDS session anchor on a long distance N6 interface. So in case um, the car, the user equipment in that case, uh, moves, then maybe a relocation of a user plane anchor, maybe also uh, aligned with the relocation of the actual service, just to keep the low latency kind of agreed service levels. And in that case, uh, in case IP address continuity and PDS session continuity is required, um, we need to align the downlink routes in the different data anchors, <clears throat> or data networks, which use this user plane function in terms of downlink traffic routing. So uh, we move actually the IP address being used by the device from a routable to non-routable address. And here, segment routing, idle lock protocols can be applied um, to route the traffic to the new anchor. So that's the second use case. Um, the scope of this draft is that uh, we first want to motivate this work by taking use cases, discussing the operation. Um, then second, propose an architecture um, that basically closes the gap between the policy enforcement points associated with the data networks and provide an architecture uh, a function of 3GPP as a binding element between this actually um, out of scope data network item and the 5G control plane. Because these downlink routes, not only routes, but also QS, whatever you need in terms of downlink um, traffic treatment policies, need to be aligned with a 5G system. So we need a binding element here. So the draft is about the architecture, how to bind the 5G control plane with the control of the downlink policies. Second is um, how to enforce uh, these policies in the transport network of the data network. So FPC may be one candidate here, either discussion or specification or information level or on the data uh, data models. Um, the third thing is to see if 3GPP can expose on its control plane the required attributes and semantics to allow us enforcing the policies we need. So this is something which is treated orthogonal to what 3GPP does. If we came up with some attributes or some control elements that are required from the 5G control plane, we may end up in a proposal to 3GPP to extend whatever can be exposed from their interfaces. And um, that helps us to, to do that kind of policing of traffic. Um, so the semantics and the data models for EPN traffic treatment policies on N6, uh, that should be in scope of this draft. The current draft is a little bit focused on describing the problem, the scope. There is not too much on solution. We have some uh, um, architecture being proposed in the sections, but more work is required here. So the summary, we could discuss this draft before posting with a couple of people and got valuable feedback like, um, so N6, uh, aspects are under specified in 3GPP, so it's treated as valuable work. Um, we should clarify that the work is on N6, and no interference with what 3GPP does is intended here. If we come up with a few extensions in terms of attributes or semantics that is required, we can make a contribution to 3GPP here. Um, 
there was a comment to include the asymmetric route case um, referring to this <coughs> DEX uh, slide number three. So that should be in the draft and highlighted a little bit. Um, then there was a question if we should be specific to the N6 protocol, whether it should be segment routing, ILA, uh, whatever kind of channeling approach. Um, so here we should be generic in my opinion uh, and just treat this as a policy being enforced and under control of the control plane, which protocol is being used. Um, there was a good point about that some data networks will apply load balancers. So this is not seen on this line N6 between the user plane function serving as the PDU session anchor and the actual server in the data network. So there are some considerations to consider, but I'm pretty sure we can easily handle that. And also, um, yeah, one comment was actually supporting the fact to decouple the anchor UPF deployment uh, uh, from the actual data networks. Um, so more comments are, of course, valuable, uh, but um, in particular, we are interested in if this is considered as useful work, complementing what 3GPP does in view of future deployment of 5G. And uh, if you think it's useful work, we would like to get more input to update the draft with details. Okay. Thank you, Marco. So 3GPP currently doesn't recognize anything on the N6, right, on the, on the GI. So you think that's going to change anytime soon? Well, IGF can contribute that part here, but in strong collaboration with 3GPP. Okay. Questions, comments? Satoru Matsushima, Softbank. Um, what do you expect the, the, the function to be deployed in N6? Because yeah, nowadays, a 5G architecture does have the UPA function, like policy enforcement and uh, charging, the area, some uh, certain uh, set of the function as defined already in UPF. So the uh, I don't s much clear about the uh, what uh, functionality deployed in the N6 in the 5G architecture. Can you clarify that? So based on the use cases, uh, primarily we see um, the need to apply traffic steering policies to have the control on steering traffic to a probably relocated UPF anchor. Um, there may be more. So if we decouple a UPF anchor from the data network and move it to the very edge, so N6 becomes very long. So we may have to apply more policies to that traffic like um, MPLS labels or QS kind of uh, treatment. So these policies also need to be enforced for downing traffic on the data network's DPN. DPN is a, can be a switch, can be a provider edge router. So we should not be specific here which kind of data plane node we assume here, but it needs to be programmable and the policies come from the control plane. So there may be some basic policies which we derive from the use cases in the document. And for that we are specific, but we should be open same as the FPC draft here. Okay, that seems like some sort of the option. Even the CVP provides an interface to get the, uh, the policy from an application function to control the user plane. But uh, your option provides the, not to use that functionality, that, that policy deploying N6 parts. Is that correct understanding? Um, well, you want me to go back to the slides? Or? Can, can you just repeat? I didn't get the last point. So, um, in the 5G architecture, the 5G, uh, 5G core provides the uh, uh, interface to uh, allow the application function to put the policy uh, effect, uh, effect to the control uh, to the user plane through the uh, 5G control plane. But uh, that can policy comes from the applica AF application function. But your proposal is looks. Uh, a application function does control directly or the user plane. Um, um, so we just show this here uh, using the AF, which is in the 3GPP specs, the most generic function. Mm -hmm. But the interface between AF and 5G core uh, is being specified in 3GPP. So we see AF as one binding element between the 5G core and the data plane policy control. The AF may be associated with any other controller, like, um, for example, the MFA controller in, in 3 Straft or something else, right? So I'm not sure we should be specific okay. here, 
but um, actually consider the two interfaces and uh, work out the details here. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. John from Huawei. Um, I've talked to Marco about this quite a bit offline, and I just wanted to add that in 3GPP, most of the time, the UPF and the AF and so on are quite tightly coupled in some sense. Uh, and the architecture that Marco is exploring here is a little more loosely coupled where there are really two domains. And uh, then you have to have some way to exchange the policies and uh, make sure that these two domains, I mean, each of these two domains are rich in their own interaction. They each do traffic steering and so on. But to make sure that the traffic steering that is done, for example, by 3GPP does not contradict what is done perhaps by the application domain. Yes. Yeah, so the question. So like uh, so part of this has like effect towards SA and pass of this towards C T. Is that the goal? Like because I, I do see both the kind of things in the draft. Right, like because you're trying to change some architectural stuff too, and I, I, I'll let like you know Georg talk if he wants, right? But I I do want at least like a clear separation of like things, like the bigger things you want to change and like more like the bits you want to do, because like the initial premise was like this was not like clearly defined, right? So that's a different thing because we are pretty much used quite a bit, right? Like we did like twenty nine two seventy five like Sri and I were there. Um, to say, okay, for a stage three spec, that for something like, you know, we, we we are kind of used to that mode of things. But changing the architecture itself, we don't like have very good uh, track record in that, right? So I, I, I would be happier if like these two things are kind of split up, like what you want to change in the architecture versus like the protocol bits you want to change. Maybe some more brain cycles need to go into here, but um, so I could say that interface between AF and a data plane in the data network, that's not covered in 3GPP. What's covered is AF to PCF, SMF kind of reference point. So that's something we want to leverage, not change. Maybe extend if required. In terms of UPF, I don't think we break what 3GPP currently does, but it's definitely assuming a different kind of deployment. So if you deploy it in a different way, I'm not sure if it conflicts with the 3GPP specification of today. But uh, if we achieve a goal, maybe that's something that can be discussed also. Okay, Georg? Yeah, uh, several things on that. Well, first of all, you have to decide whether you want to have this in 3GPP or not, or, or that's one, one path to go, but that you say, right. well, this is something we do, and our goal is to have it in 3GPP in the end. Like, 3GPP would reference it as um, something yeah. to be done. Or if you say, well, we do this, and if it's not appearing in a 3GPP uh, specification, it's still a solution we are offering, right? Would be standalone. If you want to have it in 3GPP, you need your agents in 3GPP now that practically say, we require this. So you need to start from stage one, actually. Somebody must has to say there's a technical or there's a requirement to have these functionalities. And then this trickles down to the architecture group that will maybe look at your what you're proposing in this paper, but practically they will let us do their study on their own. And only then the protocol groups get involved. So what we have so far with the, the discussion on the N9 interface, that is a replacement of an existing protocol. That is fine. Um, there, there you can go directly to the protocol group and say, look at the pros and cons and so on. But what you're doing now is something completely new. And if we want to, have, if you want that, then you really have to go strictly by the process that we have. We don't take uh, technical solutions just for their beauty. We need really people who come and say and put pressure on us and say there's a requirement. So you need companies in 3GPP that push that. So Georg, you're saying it has to come all the way from SA1, then to SA2, and then to trickle down to CT4. Yes. So you need you need to have a, a high level requirement from a user's or a network provider's perspective that you can formulate without your your language of interfaces and so on, where you practically just say there, there is a requirement or there are several requirements and those will be re, uh, discussed in SA1. And that, can, that may take a time. They, they have their own style of working and only then it goes down to the uh, to, to the architecture group. So I think if you want that, you have to do sort of the same here. 
you should get clear on the requirements. You should really think of what do we want. And then before you start working on the very technical details and describing everything, you should wait on what's the outcome of the 3GBP process as well, because that is the way you can work best hand in hand. That's just a proposal. I'm not saying you have to do that, but it, it would sort of look natural to me. M makes Thanks. sense, makes sense, absolutely. I think that was a good comment, but I, I also think um, how much impact we have to 3GPP procedure depends on the use case, right? So the very first use case may be something that's entirely complementary just to achieve downing routing and to achieve the best route. Second use case was a bit more impact to 3GPP. And here I understand we should first approach SA1 with use cases and maybe do key issues kind of description and um, then make a pro proposal towards SA2 and CT. Yeah? So what, what I said was just really like if you want to go down the 3GPP route. If you say this is something that can work standalone and you don't have uh, a 3GPP impact, that's fine. I, I just wanted to make sure, sure. how it should. No, makes sense. Th thanks for that feedback, right. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, let's uh, continue discussing this document and let's see how to proceed. Thank you, Marco. Next is uh, Kiran from on uh, this topic, yeah. 5G backhaul network with PR. I believe it's a new document. It's a first time presentation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Kiran. I did not write this document. I'm representing my colleague Uma. And he presented it in uh, ITF 102. Just you may want to, yeah, oh. slightly. Yeah, it's sliding down. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he presented this document in a rush last time at 102. And um, since then, uh, what's the motivation behind it? So we talked a lot about user plane and control plane here. What we are focusing on the mobi UPF mobility that comes in 5G network and uh, the impact or the contribution of transport network in it. So what we are trying to solve here is we have uh, different slice and service types. They are going to use different kind of SLA guarantees. And how are we going to provide that from the transport network perspective? So quick re recap. So in order to have those kind of uh, SSTs and uh, SLA guarantees, we are proposing a new reference architecture in which we include a TNF, which is transport network function in the 5G architecture. This, net, this function will be responsible for uh, distributing the TE path specific information to um, UPF and G node piece. And we can use the clear mapping functions to integrate uh, PDU sessions with different TE paths. So, so what will happen is something like if you have three different type of SSDs, they will be mapped to three PPR IDs on each node B. So this way you can get the SLA guarantees for each kind, each type of service and slice type. So, and we don't make any changes in the user plane if it is GTP based or whatever based that user plane remains intact. We are only providing an underlay solution. And, um, So in, in terms of SRV6, we are not focusing. It's completely orthogonal. In our case, we don't try to re, uh, replace GDP layer at all. And what PPR is, that information is already being discussed in LSR. What we do is we provide, we compute the TE path at the controller level and distribute the PPR ID uh, to the router nodes in the network. And uh, it has... Uh, resource specific information so if you want to provide slas that information is distributed and corresponding resource reservation is made on the nodes and um, in comparison to sr what we do is we reduce the overhead on the transport and all the te characteristics are included and we have described the table for this in the draft um, in addition this i already mentioned that for each type of ssd we will have PPR IDs. And what we have done in the document is we have described all the three mobility modes, SSE mode one, two, three. 
and described how PPRID could be used there. And um, these are the changes since last time. What we have done is explain more clearly how QoS is used and how it will be carried over the N3 and 9 interfaces. And there was a lack of clarity on the bearer's information that has been modified. And uh, the clear definition of transport network function was missing. We added that now and made some minor connections. And I think we have moved some of the information from the main draft into the appendix section. So these are the um, next steps is we just want to get the feedback from the group if this kind of work should be brought in. We want to have more discussions on the mailing list as well. Okay, thank you, Kiran. Any questions, comments? John from Huawei. Um, I don't have a comment about this per se, but there's some work in ACTN, which is also also somewhat similar to yeah. this in the sense that, I mean, not similar, but complementary, I'd say. Yeah, so um, what we yeah. are actually thinking about is how ACTN and TNF function will uh, kind of integrate or work together. Right, so right. there are... Here it's TNF and there I think it's transport yeah, path manager. Yeah. They're yeah. roughly this, but the so, techniques are different, but... Techniques are different and complementary. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, we are running out of time. Okay. Thank, thank you. I'm done. So that, okay. I think uh, we'll discuss more this on the working in the mailer. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, there's a new proposal. I don't believe there's a draft on this, but the authors wanted to quickly, you know, get some feedback on what they're thinking. So yeah. Okay. Uh, you have five minutes. Now. Hi guys, this is Kasu from Cisco. Uh, so I want to uh, like, you know, uh, talk about the uh, time sensitive network applicability for 5G. Uh, TSN as a topic, it's, it's not something new. Uh, if you see on the wireline side, it's very mature. But with ultra low latency kind of an applications coming in and there is a heavy dependency on the wireless. So that's where the TNS applicability to 5G is gaining a lot of traction. So even if you see the recent uh, IEEE and ITU uh, summary, like, you know, they kind of uh, uh, accepted that, you know, a lot of work to be done. So there are already drafts like uh, IEEE 802.1 TSN, where, where it talks about 802.1 CM, mainly explains about the front hall uh, standards, like how we can leverage TSN on an Ethernet kind of a Ethernet media to kind of make it more uh, deterministic in terms of leveraged for front hall. Uh, but but as part of my presentation, I'm, I'm trying to highlight some of the uh, aspects uh, beyond front hall. Like what are the topics we can look at uh, uh, for the future consideration in terms of uh, proposing a draft. Uh, so with that, uh, uh, without spending much time here, th this is something uh, to see on the 5G side, uh, ultra low latency application category is gaining a lot of traction. That's the, the important uh, bucket from operator's point of view, which kind of opens up the B2B opportunities. So uh, on the spec, like, you know, 22261, uh, it kind of calls out the ultra low latency, the parameters, the stats, what we are talking about is like, you know, in milliseconds. We are talking about like, you know, the network, the network should be able to provide a millisecond deterministic latency. That's a, that's the ask coming in from the, the 3GPP specs. Uh, so if you see today, uh, the, the challenges, what we have is like most of the deployments are Ethernet based and, and it's in, and it's extremely impossible to get that kind of a uh, latency, what the ultra low latency applications are looking for. Uh, so the idea here is like, you know, the. It's not working. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Two minutes to close this uh, oh, yeah. because we're running out of, yeah. Sure, sure, Maybe sure. just summarize, you know, what. Yeah. What so, you want so the, guys, the idea here is like, you know, uh, so uh, like I said, on the uh, 5G point of view from TSN, you know, there's already a lot of work going on in 802.1 CM in terms of how we can leverage the TSN uh, protocol stack, uh, you know, on Ethernet media to kind of uh, achieve the deterministic latency, which is kind of a uh, prerequisite for ultra low latency kind of an applications. Uh, so the point what I want to highlight is, you know, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, things we have to look at from the end to end network slicing point of view. 
if you see the slicing, uh, we are talking about an end-to-end -end slices. It's not about the slices on the backhaul or, or a packet core or telco cloud kind of thing. It should be an end-to-end. -end. Uh, so today, uh, if you see the work, So if you see the uh, the work here, like you know, this 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 already like you know uh, in a CTN kind of a controller recommended as part of the time sensitive networking, but there is a holistic piece missing. Like when you talk about uh, the slices, it should be an end to end, and the end to end slices requires an orchestrator, a kind of a centralized orchestrator, which kind of integrates with the TSN controllers. So that is where uh, you know I feel uh, there's a lot of work uh, required in terms of defining the standards, how we can integrate multiple domain controllers that includes the TSN as well as the deterministic networking. There's a lot of good work going on on the RecNet uh, IETF uh, uh, working group, like you know how all these things can come together and and make it an uh, outcome in terms of you know achieving an end-to-end -end slices and able to orchestrate the whole thing okay. so Kasu, i think uh, we need to we have one more two more presentations to any final yeah. thoughts just so uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, any comments guys you know th this is a proposal uh you know uh, my ask is like to the team is like if if any of you guys interested to work on this you're welcome uh so we, we are in the process of defining the draft this is more like a problem statements we are working on the uh, solutions and stuff. Uh, maybe in the next presentation, we'll come up with a detailed draft around these problem statements. OK. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Kasa. I think next time we'll give you more time. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank so you so much. Is there any for coming? Uh, it's, uh, no. Yes, from Kush. Uh, Pablo? Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. This is the last presentation, yeah. yeah. Okay. So my name is Pablo Camarillo from Cisco. Um, very quickly, uh, I'm here to present the draft uh, SRV6 mobility use cases. Uh, so, okay, anyway. So, actually, uh, SRV6 mobility is progressing. We have the SRV6 mobile draft of this working group, which has some of the motivation behind it. We also have the, the 3GPP CT4. Um, a study item that is focusing on N9, and then we have some pucks going on, like the one that R. Smith presented before. But we realized that uh, we believe that there is a lack of, of one single document that is documenting the uh, motivation and applicability for SRV6 mobility. So um, what we did in, in this draft is uh, we uh, tried to look at all the use cases where SRV6 uh, could fit in. So we divided this into two uh, big blocks. So the first one is it would be uh, service provider network simplification use cases and then the new uh, mobility use cases. Um, and we started um, trying to divide uh, what would be the use cases for SR. So the first uh, big item starting from the top would be the radio core handle. Um, so, for example, can we improve uh, how the front hole interface, um, can we uh, try to, to do a state of load or a state transfer? Um, can we do, well, the, the rip and replace uh, GDP use case that is just uh, simply replacing GDP with SRV6? Then we have uh, other use cases like end to end network slicing, uh, since SRV6 can cover the overlay and the underlay. Um, then survey chaining on the N6 or potentially on the N9 interface. Uh, and ID lock isolation. Then if we look at the new mobility use cases, uh, we have been uh, looking at some use cases on fixed mobile convergence, um, on stationary IoT devices, and we will look at the uh, ultra remote, um, ultra level low latency uh, use cases as well. Okay, so I think a quick pause, sorry. How, how are we doing with this, uh, the blue sheets? Blue sheets, did everybody sign it? Okay, please. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So this is actually the table of content. Can you go to the So this is actually the table of content, but it's what I just said. So uh, the draft is in a very early stage. Um, we uh, some of the use cases are still not written there. Uh, we want to uh, look at uh, the ideolog isolation on the N9 interface. There has been a lot of discussion on this. Uh, and there is a draft on it, but there is but the use case is not written. Uh, mobile enforcer is the one uh, ultra uh, URL C, uh, and then we also want to do further study and analysis on if SRV6 can be used to optimize the end for interface and the, and the security implications and benefits. Um, so just what 
what we would like to do uh, right now, since this, since this document is very early stage, is just uh, to call for participation uh, from people in this group. Um, we believe there are many use cases. There will be use cases where, of course, SRV6 will not fit, and we want to identify these two. And we just welcome anyone to, to join this draft if they want, or just to provide feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Pablo. Any quick one questions? Um, I've got a number of comments which I can probably post. Just to, quick, yeah, so, yeah, I'll make it quick. I think there's a minor thing. Is this draft intended to be a standards draft? I mean, standards track? Maybe not. I mean, I don't know. But no. That's what it's marked as. But Okay, okay. we will two, change it. Uh, oh, yeah, that's fine. So okay. two broad comments I'm, like, I'm getting from my CT4 guys as well is that uh, in many places in the draft, it looks like it's going to change the con see the 3GPP control plane. Sometimes it looks like it's going to be only 23501 base, but then at other places they say that the path, the head end is going to do a lot of things. Same thing about the state. Um, and it says that it can reduce state, but if you got to reduce state, you got to change the 3GPP control plane because that's what's holding all the state. So uh, there are lots of other detailed comments about like hairpinning and other things which I can post to it. Okay. So um, John, can you post those comments yeah, into the yeah, mailer, I'll please? Yeah. I'll do that. So, okay. so just to reply in short, so in essence, there will be some of the use cases that might require to change the 3GPP architecture. But uh, what we are trying to do here is to identify the use cases. We are not trying to propose this as a standard. It's just to identify the use cases. Some of the use cases will will be suitable for SRV6, some not. That's, and then based on it, we can fine. evolve on the SRV6 uh, mobile user plane. Down. That's fine. I think, uh, I guess the only request is to separate those two so that it can be seen what is modifying okay. what. At this point, it's very confusing if you okay. read. Okay. The draft That's is your message. Yeah. If anyone thanks, wants to thanks join. everyone. With that, uh, thank you, Pablo. We close the meeting. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Hey, Danny. There was some discussion on that. I think that's what I think. In general, there are some concerns, but I think this one I'm sure that you know, we have to keep a sense too because this is not your fault, right? This is not your fault. Because uh, of history and uh, the distance in case of the section. So it's very good. Uh, 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 <laughs>